There we are. Okay, good morning. April the 5th, uh, Ray Haynes, Ken Bowder, and Andrea... Walliser. Walliser. Uh, we're doing an oral history uh, uh, recording, talking about the working waterfront and other things. So, just to start off, Ray, if you want to do a little work history of yourself and, I guess, a, an oral CV. Doesn't that be extensive? We'll just try and record some of the major events in your life. <clears throat> well, it started a little bit. Uh, I worked at Hudson's Bay Wholesale, uh, which is a very uh, small part of the Hudson's Bay Company. Uh, totally uh, separate from them and uh, making very low wages and very poor conditions and I left it and I went to uh, the Canadian White Pine and I got educated. I had no labor background or social background whatsoever. Um, I know that my dad, who was a policeman, uh, uh, voted CCF and that's about all I knew and he died when I was 15 so I never did relate much to him. White Pine was located where? Uh, near the foot of Kerr Road. That's right. And McMillan and Bloedel. Um, and I got a wonderful education. I met communists and Leninists and Trotskyites and moral rearmament people and uh, learned all about unions at which I had not had a clue really. Yes. And um, from that uh, but I, I realized while I was making real good money, I see guys around that were in their 60s still slugging it out on a, on a green chain and stuff. And I thought, this is not for me. I, I, if I don't watch out, I'm going to want this money for the rest of my life and I'll, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be here just like them. So I, I, I left after 18 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was unemployed, looked around, I did a couple of other jobs. and then. I actually bumped into my foreman from Hudson's Bay Wholesale and, that, and said, any jobs down there? And I went back to Hudson's Bay Wholesale. But I went back uh, with that labor background, uh, mm. knowing all about unions and stuff. So within a few years, uh, another year, not a not very long year, I think, uh, myself and another guy organized uh, Hudson's Bay Wholesale. And from there, I became head of the, that union and got involved. Uh, First as a steward and then yeah. up the ranks. And the union's name? Uh, retail Wholesale Department Store Union. It was an international union at that time. Uh, within the last dozen years, it's, uh, it broke away and became just a Canadian retail wholesale union. What year was that? When it broke away? No, I'm just going to, I would make a wild guess. I'm not, not sure, but a dozen years ago at least. A dozen? Yeah, I would think. Okay. I, I was not involved at that time. Okay. Um, That's good. So uh, from there, I um, was with the union from '54 until '66, 12 years, I guess. And then uh, during that time, I was an officer on the federation, uh, fourth vice president, if I remember correctly. And then when Pat O'Neill left, uh, uh, who was uh, from the Pulp Union, but head of the BC Federation of Labor. When he left in 66, I was appointed and then elected in the fall convention. And so uh, I was there for, till 73. And um, uh, I was worn out in 73. It was, it was, it was a, a, tough, a tough eight years. I loved it. I mean, I bounced out of bed every day, but. Uh, yeah. And after after eight years, I was okay. not, not bouncing quite good, so mm -hmm. I always had an urge to uh, either have a restaurant, crazy, but or a resort. So I bought a resort, <laughs> and I I went to Quadra, Quadra Island. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, my family and I, and we ran a resort for five years. I ran it for two, and my wife and kids ran it for the other three, because we couldn't make any money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so. Um, just as I was going under Prittner, uh, Berger called me and I uh, went to work with him on the Mackenzie Valley Pipeline Inquiry, the, uh, being the labor liaison person between the... Justice the, Berger. Uh, Justice Berger, yeah. Uh, Tom Berger was... Yeah. We supported him in the 
campaign for president, uh, for leader of the NDP, and, and so I knew him quite well, and so I was with him for a couple years, and after that I came back and I worked 10 years for the nurses union in the long-term care area, negotiating with two wonderful nurses uh, who we hired on, and um, organized uh, about a thousand nurses in long-term care and brought their wages up to to the standard of everybody else because they were always way lower. Mm. And then my last two years or three years um, approximately were with the uh, VMREU Local 15, which uh, some time later recently uh, went back to CUPE. They had been in CUPE years and years ago. They pulled out and they went back into CUPE. And I retired in, uh, when did I retire? 90, oh, 2003? Yeah, no, I'm not quite sure, but we say, so, yeah. Say 2000 Eight, 1980, 1990. No, 1993. Yeah. And the acronym that you said, VAM? The Vancouver Municipal Regional Employees Union. It's now Local 15 of QP. Or COPE, 15 no. of QP. QP. Okay. Yeah. Vancouver Regional Municipal Employees. Did, uh, did, did you get that? Man, Vancouver Municipal Regional, I guess it's the other way around, yeah. Employees Union. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you think of the Fraser River, what comes to mind? Well, I've always thought it's uh, it's a, t a tremendous uh, uh, part of our uh, province, and I worry about it at times. Um, uh, when I see sometimes uh, the, the, the dirt and stuff that goes into it, uh, but. Uh, <coughs> And, and I remember in 48, I guess it was, the big flood. But my memory is not uh, so good, uh, so I'm not going to be too help helpful. I'm not, that's the part I'm worried about in this whole affair. Um, I, the, the traffic in the Fraser River changed significantly from the early days to current. And that would include Delta Port. And what what's your thought on all that development that went on through that? Well, I'm I'm all, I'm very much concerned about overdevelopment, and and I worry about the labor movement in a bit a bit now that that rather than looking at it, uh, the whole society uh, jobs is just got. I mean, and I understand we have to have jobs, mm -hmm. but. Uh, when I see the Federation now split on whether they support tankers uh, and, and uh, uh, we, that, that I remember that didn't happen when, when back in my day. We, we, we would get together and make a decision and nobody, nobody went differently. Yes. Uh, but we had some big battles to make those decisions, but once the decision was made, we didn't have mm -hmm. groups going off in a different direction. So labor in your day was, could be more focused, you would think? Um, I get the impression, and I, I don't like to be critical because it looks like sour grapes, but I, I get the impression they're, divi they're divided more than, they're divided a bit like they were before that period of time, uh, when Pat O'Neill and uh, myself and, <clears throat> and a few of the guys after me, uh, it was a pretty solidified organization and and had much more influence mm -hmm. because they didn't they they didn't go in different directions. Right. At least publicly, right? After uh, yeah. Oh, we had some yeah. good battles inside, yeah. and that was our argument. We actually expelled. Uh, Four unions of the IWA at one time expelled them. Expelled them, yeah, yeah. Uh, or yeah. kicked them out uh, until we uh, 
because they kept going publicly, f fighting our fighting battles in, in, the, in the public media, and we passed convention resolution, and they. I can't remember whether they opposed it or not, but shortly after they paid no attention to it, and mm -hmm. so we expelled them, and, and uh, that was from pretty hectic times. Did uh, you did you see a uh, split in those days, and I think it's come now, where the craft-based unions versus public sector, and that really was a change that became, that actually drove the Fed after a while because it became not the hardcore. Well, the, the craft unions uh, um, also were split amongst themselves. Yeah, yeah. For example, uh, I can, the, the funny little story was that when the campaign was going on, coming up during the week of the convention and who was going to oppose me uh, as, a, as the top job, um, I would, groups would ask me to come and meet with them and I remember all the building trades, uh, it was always a regular thing, I would meet with the building trades and when I came out of the meeting after, uh, one of my f supporters would come with me out of the meeting and say, you did good Gray, I think we're going to get half those guys. <laughs> <laughs> And so, <laughs> uh, so there, there was differences even in the building mm. trades. Um, um, Were they uh, political differences or strategy? Um, political, right and left. Right, uh, right and left. Uh, How did that start? How did that division become so entrenched? I think part of it was uh, the, the, the the communist problem of the, of the of, McCarthy. Uh, yeah, that that. Um, I, I know that I look back at even the positions that I took early. Yes. Uh, I, I, I I I wouldn't be happy with them now, but at that time it was just terrible. And while I felt that I was probably more progressive than many others, I still had some weird ideas in that field. And uh, and uh, and and the party, <coughs> the com communist party in the, in the labor movement, which was quite prevalent and strong, uh, opposed me often. But, but towards the end, on on labor issues, that we were always on the same side um, politically. When we, I remember getting up and blasting them about Poland and those things, and uh, at the convention because we got into international affairs, we got into everything. Um, but, and I, but, but we had great respect between us. And, uh, and I f was one of the key people fighting to get the fishermen back in late in my career, not early in my career, but you know, once I kind of saw the light, so to speak, that this is crazy, uh, we told the Congress, you take them back in or we'll take them in just straight through without you guys. Yeah. And they said, you can't do that. And we said, well, you let the Teamsters do it in Quebec, we'll do it here. Mm. Why had the fishermen been expelled? Communist uh, oh. business, oh, yeah, mine mill. Oh, oh, oh. It, it, was, it was crazy. I mean, it was just like the United States. Mm -hmm. not, not, With we the were, McCarthy well, uh, regime. And so, would yeah. that have been the fishermen's union's leadership, or be or suspected of yeah, being communists, uh, or ended or up were ended up walking uh, up at Clackwatt Sound with mm -hmm. Homer Stevens, yeah, Homer but who Stevens. was who, who was a communist, yeah. and and uh, and there was always the the talk about the threat of the communist party mm -hmm. and and the labor movement, and and. Uh, at that time, looking through my scrapbook, and I've been looking at it because I'm trying to get it all together mm -hmm. and properly. And there, there's there's uh, Tom Osbury, uh, which okay, are, okay uh, which? V Vancouver Labor Council, oh, yeah. and Stuart Osbury, his brother, was in the IWA. But uh, Tom, you know, the press release after press release, the communist threat mm -hmm. in, in the labor movement. Was that generated by the press, or was it actually generated by the oh, division in yeah. labor? Yeah, no, division in labor. There was, uh, and it, it it makes me smile now because when we 
pushed for the fishermen to come back in, it was near unanimous. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can pretty near say it was unanimous. Um, but that was at the end of the, my time, at the start of my time. Uh, it, it changed gradually, like when I talk about my, my period, uh, I, I forget that for quite a few years, 54 to 63, 63, 66. 66, I was just a, a fourth vice president or on the council and then the fourth vice president. And I, I, I slowly saw the change until uh, by, by the early, even by the late 60s, we had changed our attitudes. But it wasn't until later that we actually uh, took that position that you bring them back into the, and they're not. And then I was there when Harvey Murphy <clears throat> came back in and came to the microphone and said, I'm back. With? Join the steelworker. They, they, oh. The mine mill switched over to the steelworker. So, came on? Uh, no. Um, it, 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 into the steelworkers. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Now, a couple of names that, uh, that draw attention and were major players in the province, there was Harold Pritchett and Craig Pritchett. There was... Um, and uh, Craig I work with very closely, that's the, the son. Harold, uh, just, I'm a great guy for wandering off, but Harold was there in 48. I happened to pick the year when I went and worked in the Canadian White Pine. Oh, it was 1948, which was the year that Harold Pritchett and Dal Skog and the communist leadership of the IWA uh, tried to pull out of the international. And of course, we beat the hell out of them, <laughs> you know. And and yet, years years later, we talked about they had to get out of the international. This was crazy. Yes, <laughs> all unions should be out of the international. So in '48, he failed, and that was the end of the communist leadership in the IWA. Okay. Why did they feel? Sorry, why did they feel that they had to, to be out of the international, or why is that kind of a rule um, of thumb? Uh, well, for example, I went to my retail wholesale convention and there was my president who I admired and liked, uh, my international president, but got up and pushed a motion to support the war in Vietnam. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I got up and my Canadian director told me, that, you know, you're crazy, don't go to the mic, you're gonna, you know, that's stupid. Yeah. I said, no, no, I'm not, I can't sit here and allow yeah. that crap. So I go up and... I speak against the, the resolution, and 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 I said, and we have a leader in Canada, Tommy Douglas, who who knows what the right side is on this issue, and my president, I, I'll never forget, he ran over and said, "A wonderful man." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cover cover his political back, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the the, the 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 thing changed to tr to dramatically. Mm. I I grew up with the the son of the son of Harold Perchet, so it was Dave Perchet who I grew up with. And I'm sure I ever met him. Yeah. Yeah, Dave yeah. and Rod Dorn. Uh, Rod, Rod Dorn. Dorn. Oh yes, yes. All part of that. They and they ran at me ran at me, pretty near right to the end. But the surprising thing was that when I announced my uh, we had a special convention, I uh, forget what the issues were, but a special convention and I made up my mind about June that I would be leaving. And, I, and so the position would be open in the fall. And uh, so I would be leaving. And the first guy that jumped up to the microphone to congratulate me was uh, Craig Prichette. Yes. yes. Or was it Homer Stevens? They were all part of the same yeah. family. Uh, well, either one, one of my, because I remember they said, one of my guys said, "How come they did? They've been kick, kicking the hell out of us for years." To, you know, I said they were glad to see me go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Generous in your departure. That's right. right. Yeah. How about Emil Bjornsson? Oh yeah, A wonderful guy. Yes, I went to the closing of the Trade Union Research Bureau. Yeah, it, term, yeah. It, uh, it's finished after all these years. Yeah. Okay. And I've I met his son who he who said that I had met him before but I hadn't remembered. 
And so we had a long chat about AMO. And of course, um, there was a period of time when I was doing a tiny bit of consulting work after I left uh, Berger, before I went to the nurses. It was about two years <coughs> that I, I saw how much money you make as a consultant. <laughs> so, and, and I didn't have a job, so yeah. I, I, yeah. Did, I did. You like to eat. I like to eat. <laughs> so I did, I did work and I ended up working for the railway Canadian Brotherhood, not the transport workers. CBRT? Here. No, not the CBRT, um, one of the other railway okay. unions. Yeah. And uh, I got, I hired Emil to help me with the pension plan. I was never okay. any good on pension plans yeah, yeah. and unemployment insurance and workman's compensation and yes. stuff. I always had someone else do that for me. And uh, I had some great times with Emil during that those negotiations. So you met me. Paul? So I met Paul, yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was, my uh, when I worked uh, with ILW Canada, Craig Pritchett was the first president of ILW Canada. I was the secretary treasurer from uh, 2004 to 2010. Ah, oh. that was my role. And right across the hallway was Turb. Okay, because where, they had moved. We where, actually where, took where, over the Turb office. Where, where were they? I've forgotten now where they were. On Victoria Drive. Yeah. Maritime Labor Center is... Oh, the Maritime Labor Center. Yeah. Okay. Were they always there? Uh, in my history, Turb was oh, okay. always there. Right. I, I thought they were someplace else, but yeah, no, been. that's right. I, I talked to David Fair. Yeah, yeah. He, he's come up and looked at my scrapbooks yeah. and we've talked <clears> just like we are talking here. Um, uh, and so I met the guys in Trade Union Research yeah. Bureau. David Ferry now is uh, working with oh, yeah. a coalition on employment standards. Oh, okay. Well, With yeah. uh, a number of people. And that was quite an evening we had. You, you didn't get to that evening, I guess. No, I'm going to the next Employment Standards uh, Coalition oh, meeting that's coming up right, with yeah. Graham Moore, Dave Aegis, and Dave Ferry. Well, there was a lot, of, a lot of old things happening there that night. Yes. So when you, when you look at um, the divisions in labor, they always came together at the very end and put a common front. Is that accurate? Uh, if it on a trade union issue, yes, yeah, right, yeah. And the trade. Oh, I mean, they were better than <laughs> they were better than some of the others, like uh, Penn Baskin, who sold out and went to the Mediation Commission when we were boycotting the Mediation Commission okay. from the steel workers. Okay, uh, they would take a lousy position sometimes in the in the, co the Communist Party people and. Uh, those people and 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 other progressives uh, made up for the the fact that uh, that steel worker leadership sometimes uh, retail clerk uh, leadership was lacking. When you were starting out as a young lad working in the province of BC, wages were definitely low. Standards uh, in the workplace, as far as health and safety, were. Yeah, yeah. Poor. Uh, right. Um, in, in the wages, certainly, uh, uh, it just was an eye opener to, to just look. I hadn't paid attention to it until I w saw the IWA and 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 no, started to recognize the, the vast difference between an unorganized. Now there were exceptions, of course, but sure. basically sure. the differences in in. In all of those areas, including being able to take up a grievance or, or take up a complaint, because it wouldn't be called mm -hmm. a grievance yeah. then, yeah. or on, on, on any issue, including uh, safety issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Were there any uh, women in the workforce in those days? I look at pictures of the old Federation executive, and there's not a woman in the picture. I, I pointed that out a number of times. Now we did start to move on it. We we did two or three things that uh, I, I I don't want to sound like I'm pushing myself because Pat O'Neill was a, uh, the guy before me. I, maybe <coughs> I, 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 we we set up a women's committee <coughs> over these years, uh, international affairs committee. Um, I'll never forget. This there was, a, I wish I could think of his name. He was from the Street Railwaymen's Union, and it had come to me maybe. Um, 
it wasn't Charlie Stewart, the head guy, it was a different fellow. Every year at the convention he would talk about the environment. Mm -hmm. And we would all say, won't he sit down and shut up? What's this all about? He's taken up so much time and he just kept pushing. And then all of a sudden that book came out, the lady wrote the book about Rachel Carson. Silent Spring. Silent Spring. And Rachel Carson. And then everybody said, what the heck is this? So yeah. we established an environmental committee. Wow. And spurred uh, on by the publication of that yeah, book. Yeah, and this guy, what, what took, we, we put him in charge, we put him, even though oh. he, he opposed us on many issues <laughs> on environment, you couldn't beat him. Yeah. <laughs> he knew what he was talking about, so he, he was the chair of our environmental committee for sure. many years. And when did the women's committee get going? Um, not not sure really. It'll be in the history of the thing. Yeah, yeah. In the I probably got a, I probably got a, yeah. And were there women? In those days, by the way, our convention proceedings were verbatim. Yes. Oh. No. And uh, wow. <laughs> I think I was there when we changed it. I mean, I yeah. think I'm partly responsible. <laughs> it's that probably we... interesting reading though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. In fact, what I did, I'm getting off track, which I do terribly. Uh, what I did was some old friends that are still alive, uh, in fact some of them have died since this happened, uh, I went through the proceedings, I borrowed them from Jim Sinclair and I found speeches that they'd made at the convention and I printed them out and then I got together with them and since then Bill Giesbrick, who was tremendous on Human Rights Committee, um, uh, has died but I got together with him and gave him a copy of what he'd said in the convention, you know, a dozen, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was all verbatim. Wow. And were there women that served on the women's committee, or was it men who at first ran the women's committee? I'm a little bit worried that maybe the women's committee didn't come until after my time. I, I, I'm just not uh, on top of it enough. Mm. Um, but certainly the, 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 the chair would be a woman, mm -hmm. and I'm sure the majority would be women. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it was always viewed that, that by the craft unions, anyhow, that women were, had no place in the workplace because they couldn't carry the load. Oh, right. The image oh, was... Yeah. And physically. Phys and it was a physical event. Yeah. And... Uh, in those days, because the family family was based on a male income, mm. wife supporting children, that that was the model that everyone had. Oh, yeah. And when women came out of the house, mm -hmm. left the child rearing and went to the workplace, they, there was almost a sense that there was something wrong with what they'd done. Yeah. Right. Not true, but yeah. it was uh, what happened. And, and uh, so those... The two things are absolutely right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the unions weren't particularly pro progressive on the. Oh, I think in some areas they were. The unions were terrible. The, the yeah. work, the not, not necessarily the leadership. I'm not right. sure about the leadership, but certainly the general. They, they didn't. Membership. They didn't do anything to um, facilitate deal, a to, change. to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, there was bad treatment of women. But we did have a number of of. Uh, uh, public sector unions that had a lot of uh, support staff and administrative staff in it. Yes. And those people, and the nurses as well, were... were and uh, the secretary of the Vancouver Labor Council is a woman now, but a long time ago, um, Pearl somebody, I can't think of her name, but Pearl somebody, she was longtime secretary of the Labor Council. Right. Um, <clears throat> now... Again, the president was a man, and uh, he did the most of the talking. But uh, Pearl uh, made a great contribution, and so so, so there, there there were more and more women coming in all the time, mm -hmm. playing a role. Did the um, district labor councils facilitate that change faster than the the? mainstream union bodies because they they invited more people in it was more of a community involvement social involvement well, I, I have to say that 
one of the, what really inspired me to, get, to be active in the union uh, after we organized it. I like I was a steward, but then then <coughs> I, I uh, was on the labor. I was a delegate to the labor council, mm -hmm. and that was the first thing. <clears throat> and I'd go there, and when we had a strike, um, my union would go to the labor council, not to the Fed. It'd go to the labor council for support. And they would ask us, what are we asking for? And we'd make, have to go through our list of demands. And they look, well, nobody has that, you know, or mm -hmm. not many unions have that. Um, and so you were questioned uh, about, were you on the right track? And then they thanked you and told you that they would advise you. And maybe two weeks from then, uh, they would say they would support the strike. And I just found that outrageous. And so I went to Pat O'Neill, and I got to admit he was the guy. And we, we, from there, the federation took over, and you, everybody had to deal with the federation. And that's we didn't even bother asking for support from the labor council after that. You just went to the federation, and that policy I think is still there. No union can go on strike without. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's broken every so often, but. That was the policy. You had to meet with the federation and 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 coordinate all the support. Make sure every union was not going to cross picket lines, and unions were going to do this and that. Yeah, particularly unions affected would be called into a special meeting, and I think that still goes on. But I feel it's not quite as uh, enforced as as it used to be. So when you think of the term rating, what comes to mind? Oh, you're going to have trouble with me on that one. Yeah. I rated badly, see, and and so I am in trouble now because I'm trying to look at the nurses and what they're doing, and I'm trying to tell my guys, you know, I know I know it looks bad, but you better be sure that there isn't some merit to it, and so I tell them about rating. I mean, I said. They were sold out in the Teamsters Union. See, Teamsters uh, were awful. Just, do you understand what no, the term that's rating my is? Next question. Oh, yeah. well, okay. Go, go for that. Is, 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 is instead of organizing the unorganized, you stole members from other unions. Oh. And that's the way it's viewed. But it, it usually, the word we use was liberated. We, <laughs> we liberated them. I mean, and that, and that was very true. They they would go in and make a deal with the employer and force the people, well, I, 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 I actually force them, but they they wouldn't know any better. They they think they're getting getting a good union and uh, they get the Teamsters union, and uh, through through dealings with the employer, the union would deal with the employer, mm -hmm. and so when they try to rectify it, I mean there was no way they could solve the problem. So I've said that I, in a way, support rating if. If they have tried every other endeavor to straighten out their union and can't straighten it out, now I get in trouble on that one. But I still feel strong about it. And so, is that leadership that you would go in and take kind of strong leadership from other unions and bring them into a union that was struggling? Well, typ typically, um, we took all the Safeway drivers from the Teamsters, hmm. and I mean these, those those were just a little bit before my time. I was just coming in on the tail end of it. And it was ruthless. I mean, uh, there was talks of, of bombs under your... I used to look under my hood to see if there was a bomb wow. until I found out they attach it to the hood. So it's yeah. the, there's no value. <laughs> yeah, so when you lift the hood, you're already in trouble. Oh, no. And, and, and the Canadian Labour Congress was taking the taxi drivers who were sold out by the Teamsters. Mm -hmm. Teamsters were under Lawson were pretty bad. Ed Lawson, who became a senator. Sorry, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's, in my clippings, there's tons of clippings, not tons, but many clippings, uh, me debating, <clears throat> and, and there was a big headline in the sun, and I just saw this one, not, I'm wandering, but recently, Lawson elected as leader of the Teamsters, and then a long story for me, and picture, and everything, mm -hmm. just as there was for him, mm -hmm. Haynes says Lawson was elected by all the people he hires. Mm -hmm. There was no membership, no membership election. Does that give you a sense for rating? We, mm -hmm. we have employees that get a union, 
because there's a relationship with the union and the employer, and then they realize that it's not just... Or, or, or they haven't done a job. They could have organized them properly. Uh, uh, Simmons Mattress was a good one. The Simmons Mattress was a good one. We got calls from the people at Simmons Mattress yes. to, uh, can, can we come and sign them up? And we said, yeah, if they're interested. Well, well the Teamsters are here signing us up, and we don't think that's the union for us. Yes. So, uh, and 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 they're they're you know they're they're not signing them up on the, the way you normally sign mm -hmm. people up and tell them what you're going to get for them. It was just sort of a big thing that you're going to yeah. get in the union. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we went we went and said, yeah, if you guys want our union, we we're, we're, we're there, whichever union you want. Oh, okay. And the Teamsters had a had a. Uh, as, a, as a number of unions did, they would call everybody to a meeting. And the stooges from the company are there. Everybody's there, know everything. Else. We we did door to door, mm -hmm. nighttime. I mean, because people got fired all the time for 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 organizing a union. Mm -hmm. So we would do it secret. I I mean, I've gone to a guy's door and he looks up and down the street before he would let me in the door. Yes. Wow. That's right. That's so uh, in that case. The Teamsters accused us of raiding, but we both fought for the members and we got them. Right. And that, that happened with uh, Hal Banks and the Sea Bears International oh, yeah. and the Canadian Siemens Union. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's when we started really learning about, <laughs> the, 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 you know, I guess the, the, the Communist Union leadership still did a, a better job for the workers than... Uh, than Hal Banks and that kind of people. Any other uh, community or social organization, lodges, that were involved in your life, either through employment or affiliations or...? Uh, no, but you triggered something. Um, uh, I, I don't know how prevalent it is now, but every one of our conventions there was somebody from the farmers co-op, somebody from the credit union, somebody... Uh -huh. Uh, and I don't think it's as prevalent as now, as it now but I'm not, I'm not as involved. I mean, that, this is why I, sometimes I have, to, I, I shouldn't yak off so much because I'm not involved as much anymore. Mm. And I tell people when they start making a position, I says, when you're not really involved, it's hard to <clears throat> really say that that isn't the case. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So there was quite a few, if you, if you. Uh, look at any of the proceedings, speaker after speaker from outside organizations, and and um, the one that struck me was uh, the co the uh, co op movement and the, and the and the farmers. Mm -hmm. Now maybe they're not as active as they used to be, so maybe it's not labor's fault. Right. And I'm sure they do have speakers from other groups now, but I just don't quite see it quite the same. How did, how did the conventions um, and the unions of the day that you were involved in, where did they get the, uh, the authority, and I use that loosely, yeah. to become involved in international events? Where did that, the impetus come from? Um, it's the way it was. I mean, um, we 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 had a protest, uh, and, and I can't quite recall exactly, but I think we sh shut down the province for ten minutes or five minutes. It was very insignificant for Vietnam. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where did that authority come from, though? Where did they, because well, you, you know, were talking earlier about the president of retail wholesale well, nobody, U.S. Nobody sort of dared. Uh, well, I, I, you know, the, I, this is where I jump around too much, but I remember when the International of the Laborers Union tried to fo force them into their international pension plan, which had flaws, and they wanted their Canadian, they wanted their own. Okay. We told the international, get the hell out. We met with them and told them to get back over the border, and if you don't, we're going to condemn you. You can do it quietly, or you, we're going to publicly condemn you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's typical that uh, 
you know, they, 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 would, they would support Bush and, not, you know, I mean, I don't know who they supported, but yeah, that, yeah. that was like my guys, yeah. my guy uh, supporting, I guess he was supporting, um, who came after Kennedy? Uh, Johnson. Johnson. They were supporting. And Johnson, you know, had done some pretty good things for labor, I think, and, 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 and human <clears throat> and the racial questions. But uh, on war and stuff like that, they would go along with him on those kind of issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I got off your question. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, Do you remember? We did. We did. The British Columbia did more on the great workers' boycott than any other provincial organization in North America. What is the great workers? Uh, Chavez. Oh, Hugo? No, no not no, Hugo. Um, Caesar. Caesar, yeah. Caesar yeah. Chavez. The grape. In, in fact, I, I and Al Peterson, the guy I mentioned to you earlier, myself, and uh, three or four of us were invited down to his compound down in Southern uh, California. Southern right? California. Yeah. And we went down there and met with him. He came up here and we had Chinese food and then. In Chinatown, when there were, when that's where you went for Chinese food, right? And um, we we were able to do more than some places because uh, we had the Safeway drivers, and we just said we're not hauling grapes. So rather than just a, a, a don't buy a boycott, it was a don't handle. Yes. Mm -hmm. And CBRT guys were good; they wouldn't handle the team. Canadian Street. Brotherhood of Railway and Transit Workers. Sorry, yeah. And uh, the Teamsters still played games, you know. <laughs> did, did what was the, sorry, what was the background of the grape issue? Uh, just trying to organize uh, the grape workers in the fields. Oh. And terrible conditions and terrible... Exposure uh, to uh, pesticides. Uh, uh, right. Oh. oh, yes, right. And exploitation of, uh, of, of, of labor. Of labor. Oh, okay. And, and it was called what? You said it was called the grape... The grape. Grape workers? Yes. I, I think that was the name of their union, the Grape Workers Union. I don't, I'm not, yeah, I don't, it seems I, to be. Yeah. And uh, so we uh, took a boycott, and, and that boycott meant don't handle as well as don't buy. And uh, we really... And on the Vietnam thing, uh, we were ahead of our times there. Uh, I got invited down to San Francisco to speak at a big rally mm. on behalf of the BC Federation of Labor. Now, it's kind of funny because uh, I was fourth vice president then. I wasn't the, wait, wait a second, let's see what I was. Yeah, I, I was fourth vice president and all, all of a sudden on a Wednesday, I think it was, Pat O'Neill, said, I've, we've been invited to go down there, who can go on Saturday? Mm -hmm. And everybody said, Saturday, you know? <laughs> and so I said, well, I'm available, you know, so I go down there, I'm speaker number 48 oh, okay. at 4 o'clock or 4.30 uh, in the afternoon. But it was a wonderful recognition. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, wow. uh, and I was able to go to Santa Anita while I was there. Was, was uh, apartheid in the picture in those days? Or is there an active? I don't remember it that much, but I'm. I would imagine we would pass resolutions on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any other big uh, social injustice? At Amchitka. The, Amchitka or the yeah. uh, nuclear blast? Yeah. Now wait a second. What did I say? I was invited down to the speak. Uh, speak. The Vietnam speech. No, Amchitka. Oh, it was Amchitka. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm getting confused. That's okay. True. That's the problem. And that one minute silence might have been for Amchitka. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was speaker number 48 or something on, on, on Amchitka. Wow. But it was quite a recognition that a federation Absolutely. up in Canada would be invited down there. With three million people. <laughs> yeah, right. That was it. Yeah. But a big voice. Yeah. Were there any uh, particular ethnic groups that went through your employment history, uh, starting early on and and coming through? 
uh, we see a lot of news about yeah. the, the people. Uh, are... uh, what happened to the farm workers and all that. You know? mm. uh, that was after my time, that farm worker incident. Um, what was the farm worker incident? Um, Jim Sinclair can tell you all about that. They, um, they, they, they still do it, I'm sure. They pack them into the, they take them out to the fields in, in, in unsafe trucks. Oh. And, and there was a terrible accident and another oh. got killed. Oh. And they've tried to change the legislation and, and, um, and, and, and the enforcement of uh, compensation mm. rules and stuff. It was overloading of uh, yeah. uh, panel vans that were unsafe to be on the road to start with. <laughs> they right. load them up with 15, 20 uh, migrant, uh, not migrant workers, but uh, uh, generally foreign workers mm -hmm. and head them out to the field as cheap labor. Oh. It was almost... Uh, uh, you wouldn't think it would happen in British no. Really. no. But the legislation in place at the time through employment standards allowed that yep. to happen. Yep. They yep. created actually a farm workers I, I provision there. I think so. Yeah. What year would that have been? Oh, that, that isn't that fairly, long ago. Fairly recent. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. 10, 15 years maybe yeah. at the most. In, in that era. And, and that's uh, um, actually the fellow that's meeting with David Ferry is Graham Moore, who used to be the advisor to Patty Stockton who was the Director of Employment Standards uh, quite a while ago, and he wrote most of that legislation. I heard, and uh, <clears throat> I wished I'd know more about it, that the woman who opposed Sinclair, because a lot of people thought, Jim's okay, but he's not really as progressive as he should be. And so they looked at this person, but I hear that she was opposed to a... a some of these things. Uh, the Federation should spend more time yes. looking after its own members rather than yes. getting involved in all this other stuff, which I think I'm told, and as I say, my problems are not involved. I don't even go to the Fed conventions uh, that much anymore, uh, that uh, uh, they were unhappy with her position on sticking within the labor movement and not spending as much time as Sinclair spends on other issues outside mm -hmm. the labor movement. Mm -hmm. Now, um, were there employers that were supported, uh, that labor supported? It couldn't have been us against them forever. There had to be a relationship with the employers. Um, I think there was a one chap, Hamilton, in my early days where we could see eye to eye uh, on lots of stuff. Uh, he was with the Employers Council, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big organization at that time. I'm not sure it's quite as prominent now. Um, but he often would be overruled by his people. Absolutely. And so we, we, we did sort of have, have <clears throat> rocky times. I, I, I can tell you one funny one if you want. I get, I absolutely. Love, I, I love doing this because it brings I, back such, such memories. I was invited to speak to the Chamber of Commerce or the Employers Council. I'm just not sure. Mm -hmm. I've got the clipping. And... I got tremendous coverage in all the papers. Uh, uh, our role was to take the role of management, and the guy from the other side was to take the role of the union. Role playing. Oh. And he got up and said, if I was head of the union, I wouldn't bother with this, and I wouldn't do this, and I wouldn't do that. You know, we, you know weak stuff. I got up, <laughs> and I said, my name is so-and-so, I have a company, and I told them about my company. I just played, I acted <laughs> as a management guy. And of course, I had them all laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and I said, all this crap about not being, criticizing unions for belonging to the, affiliating to the NDP, what kind of nonsense is that? You guys put tons of money, but I did it in my way. Yes. I said, 
uh, I would quit this business where we give tons of money to all these <laughs> organizations. Yeah. So uh, anyway, you asked me. Uh, oh yeah. I w um, so there was s s some reasonable guys. Uh, I remember sitting though at a at a big dinner, and I ended up with H. R. McMillan right there. And, oh yeah. And God, he was awful. No, is that right? Yeah, ruined my lunch. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I said, well, I, you know, I said I just met with um, with a, a, a government official from Sweden, and he, he sounded so different than you. <laughs> Who was H. R. McMillan? Um, it was McMillan Bloedel. McMillan Bloedel, oh, huge okay. uh, forestry forest, forest company. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he he started it. Was it, it like McMillan and Blodell? I think it, no. I think yeah, it was a late merger. Yeah, a late merger. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Canadian White Pine was McMillan Blodell. No, we say. I'm not sure now, but yeah. I, I I I'm sure it was McMillan and then Blodell afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Big corporate entity in yeah. the province. I mean, they were, M and B was the. It resounded throughout the whole oh, yeah. it was And then we had uh, U.S. players come in like Warehouse Where, and, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. those yeah. other players. But M&B was yeah. the, the Canadian West Coast That's right. logging entity, period. Yeah. Tug fleets, camps all up and down the coast. Huge, huge player. Yeah. And you met the owner, yeah. which was, yeah. or <laughs> board chair, or whatever he was. Whom you didn't find impressive. <laughs> well, he was kind of snarly. Was kind of, you know, you, usually when you're having lunch oh, no. or something, something like that, <laughs> yeah. you just settle down. <laughs> yeah, right. Settle down. Right. <laughs> well, the, the the one other guy that I clashed with who who had the same mannerisms is um, <laughs> Campbell, Gordon Campbell. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And I, I, I tell everybody, I, I had actually had forgot a little bit about McMillan. I always tell everybody, I said, of all the employers I met in my whole uh, 38 years, Campbell was the most uh, impolite and uh, business-like. Mm. Uh, well, touch. I can just tell you what happened. I, I, I was working for VMRU, and of course they had the city of Vancouver employees. Yes. And... We would negotiate with them, and we just took the position that, if, that, 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 that the museums and the library and um, other uh, Vancouver operations should get the same soon. Why do we have to go and negotiate with every one of those yeah. when we've established the pattern in the city of Vancouver? And so we asked for a meeting with them. And usually, as I just tell people, I say, you go in, it doesn't matter who it is, if it's even... The, the steel companies, yeah. forestry companies, uh, mining companies, with all the tough leaders they yeah. are, you always go in and there's a nice Respect. chat, respectful yeah. chat, and you talk about the hockey game last night, yeah. and, and then then eventually somebody says, "Well, let's get down to work," you know, and you yeah. start business. Not with Campbell, not mm -hmm. even a good morning, hardly. Right. Yeah, just just the typical sort of contempt for union union people. I mean, that's what I added up to, whether, or maybe not, maybe he's like that all the time. Yeah. Planet College, you later moved into the NDP's uh, secretary's office. Because um, I did stuff at Cap Planet College. Well, the guy that I ran into up at Cap College was uh, Larry Kuhn. Oh, I know, with and Larry BC, from BC Teachers. TF. And I actually worked for the teachers for th uh, three months, I think. Right. When they got the right to strike, they'd never dealt with a strike before. Yes. So I worked with. Uh, well, it came into the Fed, that's not right. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. No, I I tried to get VMRU back into CUPE. I tried to get the nurses into the Fed. Yeah. I tried to get the teachers into the. Well, I did, I was only there for three months, but I let them know my position, yeah. and they all did it afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Paul Petrie was the other guy that ended up, uh, he ended up taking over the Labor Studies program at SFU. I don't know where it sits now. There's another man that's there, and I've met him, but I can't remember his name. But uh, the what's happening on the uh, BCTF side is they're developing curriculum now, history curriculum marketer is part of it, to put it into the curriculum. And what we've been able to do here 
is you can explain that about the pilot project? Which the schools? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we have our longshoremen going into schools, um, and I guess just having the kids sort of question them about what was labor like and what kind of jobs did you do, um, and so I don't know what, what's going on beyond that. Are they, they're, they're hoping to design a curriculum around that includes labor. Yes, mm -hmm. and what, what actually happened was the longshore came, uh, the old timers came ahead and met with, uh, was it grade six? something like a grade six group. Sounds terrific. And, and they questioned them. They got them to a safe okay. place where they could ask questions. And one of the kids, and this is my example of how we need to do this, one of the kids was saying to another kid, these guys are just a bunch of rednecks. <laughs> and then after they finished traveling with the longshoremen, going to the docks, looking at pictures, creating plasticine images, actually artwork on the waterfront and loading of ships all out okay. of plasticine, the young lad that had made that comment actually got quite close to one of the longshoremen and realized that he was just another human being. Aww. And that was, that's a pivotal... It, it, rednecks or reds? Rednecks. Oh, well, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's that too. Yeah, right? uh, but he's talking about rednecks. Yeah, rednecks. Yeah. That, that, that's the image that was there of people who worked on the waterfront. Yeah. You know, and it goes back to oh, uh, Marlon Brando. Right. Okay, yeah, right. So that there and, and the image that there was something that these people never provided anything, they only took advantage of everything. Well, because I only always thought of the longshoremen as just a very <clears throat> militant uh, trade unionist. Uh, mm -hmm. Who was the guy in the Seattle? Uh, the Harry Bridges. Yeah, B Bridges. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. Him and Craig Pritchett were. Yeah. 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 No, no, there's some major history. Yeah. The bottom line right. comes down to people that provide all of the resources uh, in the way of labor are not being recognized. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got to this yeah. juncture by saying we need to have your history and we need to understand that everything that we see here is not just a discussion. Somebody built it. Yeah. And that goes from the food on your table to the house to everything else, it's your it's, yeah. it's labor has provided that, yeah. and uh, it's when somebody says redneck, they're not giving us due yeah. for what we do. So that's how we got here. When you're thinking back over your work history and and the history of uh, working in the province of BC, technology has changed significantly. What's your thought on what technology is done in the workplace? Well, all I think about is the resolutions, and I bumped into them in my scrapbooks when 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 this started, because uh, this technology and automation and all this stuff was right at my time, mm -hmm. and all we could talk about is how wonderful it was going to be, and we're going to have short uh, day work days and short work weeks and everything, <laughs> and 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 within. Since then, we've gone to longer hours. Seems to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, On the benefit side, it also took away for contributions to benefits, right? Just in a, in a, as an aside, you need a, oh. a quantum to pay for the oh, benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a, you need a quantum to pay money into a fund to keep a pension active. Mm -hmm. And with technology, the numbers got smaller. So it put all of the benefits of a working person. And more, life. if more and more people are going to be working in their homes and stuff like yeah. that, which is nice, I guess. You can imagine what that does too. Yeah. How how do how do, how do they even think about being in unions when they're sitting in their homes doing yeah. their jobs? You no, know, telecommuting is yeah. is something that. Yeah really came on with the computers and computers have created more work than they ever took away yeah. in, in that uh, administrative work. It's a monster. Yeah. Just a monster. Um, now, we, we, I mean, how are we going to have more and more jobs all the time? I mean, it, 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 why aren't we why are, why aren't we really serious about cutting down our work, work time? Because, of course, we've been brainwashed that we got to buy everything in the world. Consumer well, consumerism. The, it, I think it comes down to just the dollars and cents. 
if you can get a man to work 12 hours a day, then we don't have to pay that other guy benefits for that. Benefits are, as you know from mm -hmm. negotiations, are 25 to 35 percent roll up, right? And more depending on how sweet the package look, is. Look how hard the unions are getting hit now yeah. with, with pensions. Absolutely, absolutely. Awful. Yeah. So, including retail wholesale. All. Yeah. Hit hard. Yes. Well, it's. And the building trades. Any anyone that invests in the stock market, and that's mm -hmm. really what you do with half your pension fund, is you bond it and, and stock it with usually U.S. large investments. Well, I, I, I'm not positive about this, but I think the NDP was partly responsible. They uh, changed the rules when they were in power sometime. You, you can check into this because mm -hmm. I'm not positive about mm -hmm. it. To allow bigger investments in stock uh, rather than, than gold edge stuff. And uh, <clears throat> a number of unions, including retail wholesale, Played the stock market and, and, and got hurt. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. There's there there's billions of dollars in pension funds in Canada. <clears throat> there's two models that are really out there: a blended portfolio with bonds and stocks, or just a bond portfolio. Seems to be what people do. And the equity side is risk. The bond is supposed to be stable, but in the current environment, bonds are not that stable. No. So uh, you have this huge market, and I was the administrator for the Longshore Pension Plan for oh, six years. Okay. So I, I dealt with that. Too. Yeah, I, I was I, one. I was the lead trustee of three trustees. I brought in M. O. B. Arneson. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, there was a, one smart man. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just a. A little bit of information in my time. No, but you know, you, 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 I had a phobia for compensation and pensions, and yeah. and so when you're the top guy, you can have yep. other people do that stuff. Yeah, well, it, it was so important, and it was so forward thinking to even have pensions. I and never had a pension plan until I went to the nurses. Oh, is that right? And Are I'm you? lucky to be surviving. Oh. Never had a pension plan at the BC Fed. The Fed never had a plan. Oh, no. is that right? Not while I was there, no. Wow. And, no I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. And, uh, retail wholesale. And retail wholesale. I had one after I left. <laughs> oh, okay. Still doesn't so work. So here I go to the nurses, and of course I come under the government super, superannuation super one, annual. which is one of the better ones. Yes. And I, I haven't got a huge pension, but yes. it's ample. Yes. And I just realized... Well, I, I mean, I was crazy. I never, I, I, I was too busy working to even think about my pension. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, so I was very lucky to get it, uh, work with uh, the nurses and get covered by that pension plan. Right. Wow. I, I, huh? I would have thought you yeah. would have been covered some which way. No. I, I kid Art Kuby, he's got two. He's got one from the Congress and one from the Fed. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, are you planning to talk to Kubi or? Uh, it was it was something that uh, you could because we're we're focused on the Fraser River, yeah. we're we're stretching our boundaries. Yeah. It it may be something that uh, uh, when we talk as a steering committee, oh. that we open that up a bit, or maybe it'll go off to the history department and labor studies, which makes more sense, because stuff like your scrapbook would oh. do well. Do have copies of that material to show that mm. trending over the years. Right? Anytime you guys want to come up to Half Moon Bay, you can come and look at them. Yeah. Well, what? My friends just got married there on the weekend. They looked oh, up to Half Moon Bay. They had the best time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So uh, they've what, been dating what? for ten years, and you can. Believe where did they stay? Do you know? Uh, they oh. stayed because there's not too much. Uh, they stayed at a uh, B and B that had a rather big oh, lot. Oh. Okay. Because um, right. I was like going to say house. there's no real major hotel or nothing. Yeah. So they had like an elopement package. Or oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. my friends Lisa and myself, oh, they had just the greatest weekend no, it's, out there. It's really it looked nice. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what would be great would be to take your material and get it digitized mm -hmm. so that the, even if it's photographed. I so think I, I, Claudia, Claudia Ferris, do you know that name? Mm -hmm. She, She's doing that. And she oh. interviewed me. She At one time, I think she... Um, Thought she might want to write something with mm -hmm. my history, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so did Dave, so did I think David Ferry, but 
when they find out I've got terrible memory, they, I think they give up. <laughs> but uh, she, she's been doing, to, she, she got my scrapbooks there and took a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who does she work for? I think she's um, kind of on her own. Freelance? Yeah, you, you should talk to her. Yeah, okay. Um, Claudia Ferris. Yeah, I'll turn Like to, Ferris wheel? Yeah. See, kind of Ferris? See if I got it. Is she on the peninsula with you? Yeah, and I think she's also uh, got a place in town as well, I'm not sure. Yeah. See if I got it. Yeah, there it is. Two numbers, 604-886-6506. And 604-328-8646. And she's a and writer, she, history... Yeah, and she's on the Chamber of Commerce. I don't know how she ever got on that in Gibson's. No, it's all right. Because <laughs> she's, she's very, very progressive and she snuck on there somehow. Mm. And her background? Um, not quite sure. Well, how did I met you get her, in I, your door? Okay, I met her through uh, Steve Baker, and Steve w worked for me. Uh, he was one of my guys at VMRU, oh, okay. and he's now retired, young, yes. but retired <clears throat> and r deeply involved in teacher-parent uh, stuff. Right, and, okay. Uh, so she has history in labor, or do you know... Well, she's sure very knowledgeable, uh, but whether she just picked it up with recently or not, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. with, but her and Steve uh, are quite close. Would she share some of those? Oh, yeah, sure. No, she's a great person. So that would be you saying that we have permission for that? Because it, for it you becomes... To, for you to go it belongs to, to her. No, to see whether she would share some of those clippings. Oh, I, I, have, no, I have no problem with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's just, uh, if we're talking to her, or if one of us calls her, we would say we and talked it, to Ray. No, I, and we would be interested in getting some her, clippings. Yeah. yeah. It's up, and, to, up to her if she's happy with it, I'm happy yeah. with it. Because Labor Studies up at SFU is going to start to okay. become a degree-granting program up there, which okay. is a first. Mm -hmm. I think she'd be a good person to talk to and be interested. Excellent. And she's, a, she's very progressive and very... Very live wire. Person. Mm. I think at this very moment, though, she she and Steve are on their honeymoon. I believe oh. down in the states somewhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Were there? Um, and we were having this discussion with Bill uh, about socializing with co-workers and having picnics at Stanley Park. Is that something that you recall? I've got wonderful pictures of our picnics at Belcara Park. Oh, okay. And Belcara. Hey. Yeah. We, we went there every year retail wholesale. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Do you, do you recall them having BC days at Stanley Park that were open to, or Alberta days or Saskatchewan days? No, I don't really recall that. Okay. okay. Any other social? But, but, but the picnic <clears throat> was the big thing, and I, I kind of regret that somehow we don't well, want anymore. Lost that, yeah. yeah. Now, as. A huge, huge crowd. I mean, it, it, there used to be a guy, uh, what was his name? Took, took all the pictures. He had a camera that went like this. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and the kids would run from this end, well, from this end to this end, and try and get in both ends of the picture. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Were uh, there Sunday? His name was Sunday Photos. Sunday Photos. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he'd have a repertoire of. He's dead, of course, a long time ago. Yes, somebody would hold those. They may be uh, at the Vancouver Museum. I'm not sure. I've got, as I say, I've got at least two pictures of the picnics, mm -hmm. and I've given, I've given them. Got them reprinted and given them to 
Big people, right. old little friends. I'm outliving them all. You see, that's yes. what's happening. <laughs> Would he have done it for all the other organizations? Oh, he did it for the BC Fed pictures oh, okay. or Sunday photos. Yeah. He did all. He did all the labor stuff pretty near. Okay, good. Yeah, good. That's a good place to go to. Um, now. When you think of First Nations, by the way, can I keep this? Uh, oh, you got that's have the only that. copy I have. Oh, okay, but I I think I can make a copy of that. No, 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 no that's okay. That's all right. Uh, if if it's if, the if, March twenty second edition of the record, I can. Or it's online. I can email it to you if you'd like sure. to store it. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's cool. Yeah. You've got my email address. Yeah. yeah. Just on the consent form there, and I'll send it oh, with oh, yeah, your copy right. of that. Yeah. Okay. That makes yeah. okay. Sense. When you when you think of uh, the Fraser River fishing First Nations, what what kind of comes out of you? See, I knew it was going to be weak on all this stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, There's no such. Thing all as I know is that I used to dig fish in the Campbell River down in White, White Rock. I lived at White Rock from age age six to age ten or eleven. Okay, and. Uh, I actually, we, I went to a Seventh-day Adventist uh, school, mm. uh, which was a half a block away, up, up 160th, which is right there at the bridge, Campbell River. Mm -hmm. And when we heard a school of fish was coming up, <coughs> we'd even run out of school and go down and jig them. We didn't, we just hooked them out. Oh. Was that hooligans or smelt? Salmon. Salmon. Mm -hmm. sell, there was I'd, that many of them? I'd sell salmon. I, I would get a salmon and take it and try and sell it. And when I asked more, for more than 56 for a salmon, the people rebelled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Do you remember Ooligans on the Fraser can't, River? Can't say I do, no. Okay. So that's, that's, <coughs> that, that, that's my... Yeah. I'm trying to think of... I must have had something to do with the Fraser River, but I really got help in it very much there. Um, well, the South Arm is down on our way to Crescent Beach. Yeah. And the, the Siemens Union, or um, the, the SIU, which we don't, don't even need to discuss. <laughs> yeah. um, but the CBRT became local 400 of ILWU, yeah. and that's the deckhands that were servicing C-SPAN and, okay, and yeah. Schmidt now, which is the old Rivto, which was mm -hmm. Straits Towing and, and that. No, I'm not much help to you there at all on the, on the Fraser yeah. River. Um, I'm sure uh, I'll think of something as I'm driving home or something. That's good. Yeah. Did your, uh, you were married and have kids? Uh, yeah, and uh, um, I'm, I'm my second wife, my right. first wife, uh, we, we broke up after 38 years. Right, right. And then she just died before me. Okay. And uh, so I had a, a son and two daughters. Right. My daughter lives in Sapperton. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. Down there, yeah, yeah. Oh, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah, she has a massage uh, therapist right on 6th Street. In Sapperton? No, in New Westminster. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know right what we're talking about. Near the little restaurants and stuff. Yes. I meet her sometimes as well. Yes. So that, that your lifestyle as a union representative over the years would have impacted on your family and your relationship with your... Yeah. Um, my 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 son is a long haul driver. Works for uh, um, what's the ad where you see the trucks going up through the valley? Atlas Van Lines. No. Uh, oh, brother. This is this is where I am trouble. Can't can Is it Cam Loops? No, it's not Cam Loops. Freightways, I guess. Freightways is one of them. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's a long haul driver. Been doing that ever since I can remember. And my daughter's a therapist. My other daughter lives in Black Creek between oh, yeah. Camel River and, and Courtney. Are any of them in the union movement? 
No, but they're pr quite progressive. Yes. Especially at Sioux Dallas. Yes. Uh, my son owns his own truck, but he yes. works for them. Yes. Um, yeah, my daughter is, uh, particularly my daughter at Camp Black Creek, she's fighting with the authorities all the time mm -hmm. over, uh, she looks after autistic children. Yes. So she, you can imagine how much fighting she's doing all the time. Yes, with the <laughs> government that we have, yeah. yes. And she's changed them up there, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, that's what labor's role is. Well, she had a bipolar. I got a bipolar grandson who okay. turned out wonderful. Yes. Except he works in a fish farm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, he's a great kid and a great success story. She stuck with him, and right. he he had unbelievable troubles with him when he was small. But he's okay now. He still has to watch himself, but he's very good. So then she gets into that field and she's got an autistic child now. Right. And so she's fighting with the authorities all the time. So she says that the background with her dad and mom, because her mom was a bit of a protester too. She pro But she didn't like it because they wrote it up in the paper, Sylvia Haynes, wife of Federation. <laughs> She says, why don't they just leave that last part out? And yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. She protested the highway or something out quickly. So when you look back at your your time in uh, in all of your jobs, who were the uh, names that leap out that made a significant change besides yourself in the province of BC over your, your time in labor? And it doesn't well, have to be attached to labor. Okay, my, my mentor was the guy that I went to and said that we want to organize a union. And I heard your union is, they had just signed a contract with Mac and Mac, which was a big, big wholesale outfit in Vancouver, hardware outfit. And it was front front page story. Okay. And I got his name, and his name was Jerry Emery. In fact, I named my son Mark Emery. No, no kidding. And, but he died of cancer at 39 years of age. Wow. And, uh, but he was my mentor. Okay. And uh, he, he pushed me into the job. First, first of all, he pushed me to the Federation. He, he, he was on the Federation executive and said, I'm too busy for that stuff. You look after that race. So I went, and I, that's how I got involved on the council and then Fort Vice. And so he was the first one. Bob Smeal, who was uh, CBRT and then Canadian Airline Flight Attendants, mm -hmm. uh, was the president of the Federation and got me to replace him and Joe Morris of the IWA. Got me to uh, take over the f after Pat O'Neill. And, and that position was? Secretary Treasurer, which was the top job uh, in Federations, right. uh, not the president. President was a was talking head. Yeah, uh, put in tons of time. George yes. Johnson was wonderful, great. He he replaced Bob and Bob died, and uh, so he was a wonderful mentor. Um, as I say, I fought Jim Kinnear, but uh, eventually I was very proud to, to work with him. And mm -hmm. uh, well, I was out of the labor movement at that time, but I was with the nurses, so my right. nurses weren't affiliated, but I still talked to Jim a lot. And uh, so, so Jim, I felt uh, was, I felt it was a turning point in the Federation after Jim. Any any uh, politicians that come to mind as Berger. being? Berger, Tom Berger and Vickers. And Vickers. Vickers. What was his first name? David. David Vickers. Died, retired as a Supreme Court judge. They were both ended up judges, and retired and died just a couple months after he retired. Mm -hmm. He was one of our poker players. Oh, with, that right? with Xander and us. Who's at the table when you're playing poker? Uh, who our, was? Who? who uh, uh, well, John Squire, who replaced me at, at uh, retail wholesale. Okay. Um, then he's he's died. Uh, David Vickers at the table, he died. Uh, Blair, uh, my brother. Another great guy who did uh, uh, 
actuary stuff and pension plans, and you, you talked about right. the markets and everything. Yes. He was wonderful. His name escapes me for a second. Sure. Uh, he's, he was at the table. We have trouble getting a game now because, oh, yeah. and Al Peterson, I mentioned, uh, yes. longshore mm -hmm. guy, uh, retired and re from retail wholesale. He's now got uh, leukemia and I saw him the other night and he's in bad shape. So mm -hmm. it's hard to get, I'm the guy who ranges the game and it's harder and harder to get a game going. Right. right? How many and are we try a, We try a young guy in, but it doesn't work out sometimes. <laughs> uh, um, we try to have six players, and it's a fight every time to have six players. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Jim St. Clair has indicated that he wouldn't mind joining us, so that, but uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, we're willing to have him, but he's he's all over the province. And, uh, <coughs> so let's see. Um, George Johnson, uh, I can't o o o overemphasize, he was a great president. Yes. Uh, in front, it was from the AFL gang, and it was oh, always yeah. the clash between the AFL and CIO. CIO yeah. Do you understand the yeah. AFL CIO? Um, the American Federation of Labor was the, sort of the craft unions, mm -hmm. and the CIO was the Congress of Industrial Organizations. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they merged. They couldn't even agree on a new name, <laughs> so it's AFL CIO. Walter Luther, who was a wonderful leader mm -hmm. in the CIO got killed in a plane crash, otherwise I think the labor movement would have been way, way different. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been more progressive and more like the CIO than ending up at the AFL, in my opinion, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, where was I? We're just uh, looking at people who were significant yeah. from your memory. and Well, <clears throat> Guys like Walter, I read a lot of the history of the labor movement. You do yes. that when, at that stage when I started to get really interested and read all about Ruther and all about uh, left-wing politicians in the yes. States. Yes. Uh, I can't think of names right now, but a uh, uh, guy who was trying to run for president, and we never, nobody even knows about him, but from, yes. from a third party. And uh, I want politicians in... BC. Any politicians uh, leap to mind besides the two judges? Well, I I, <coughs> I clashed with Barrett uh, quite a bit. Yeah. They, so, they all thought he was in my pocket, which was, <laughs> you know that was the that was the myth they tried to per perpetrate, and they're still trying it. <laughs> um, but uh, I supported Berger, and I swung the labor movement enough to defeat Barrett at the convention, and then Berger lasted one year and gave up. Okay. Got defeated and we gave up. He came, he became what? He became the leader before oh. before Barrett of the NDP. Yeah, before by Barrett. a very close vote. Oh yeah. Okay. And it was our vote that did it. Mm -hmm. And Barrett, in my opinion, never forgave the, me and the labor movement. Yeah. And if you read the latest <clears throat> book by Ron Mickelberg, okay. that's worth reading. It's a good read. Um, I'm quoted in it a couple times. Barrett came to me and Berger the morning after we won the leadership and said, you guys have got to, and he used an unusual word that doesn't even sound true, but contrive a public fight. It doesn't look good for you guys to be so close. We both told him, go, go to hell, you're crazy, Dave. But he never forgave us, uh, forgave me particularly, even though I... He was my new leader I, yeah. after Berger stepped down. Mm -hmm. he, he took the leadership. So we had difficulties, uh, and that was when I was leaving anyway. Yes, yes. But, and my guys, after I left, maybe were a bit harder on him than they should have been, I don't know. Right. But uh, he, he was, uh, I worked with him. I worked with Alec McDonald. We made a big presentation on on tel tele the BC Telephone Company rates. Um, I knew all of those guys, David, right. David Stupich, uh, mm -hmm. they were all my, my time. Clash with Bill King, because he was very close to Dave Barrett. Um, so you see, what do you see now? I've made a lot, every year we made a presentation to old Wacky, you know, WAC, yeah. W.A.C. Bennett. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
And, uh, and one year we didn't go over, we mailed it to them, and of course that was a big story in the press. How dare we, <laughs> how dare we mail our presentation instead of going over? We said, well, what's the use of going over and spending all that money? Yeah. He doesn't listen to us anyway. Yeah. Was he approachable, W.A.C. Bennett? Um, no, we had lots of troubles with him. Um, right. uh, their labor policies weren't very good. He, I remember a very funny thing with him, uh, and I do digress here, but we made our presentation just after he'd been re-elected for a third term or something. Mm -hmm. And as I finished, he said, oh, Mr. Haynes, he says, oh, please extend your thanks to everyone for voting for me, <laughs> to all your people for voting for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very, 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 uh, and I was there towards the end when he was uh, losing ground badly, and Gallardi was trying to undermine him, mm -hmm. and Gallardi tried to play games with us. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so, and then his, was it his son took over after that? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Did you have any dealings with him? No, I'm just about out of it at that yeah. time, because yeah. uh, when Bennett got defeated, yeah. that's 73 and I'm on my way to my resort. Yes. And I'm out of it for three, five years between yes. that and Berger and the Mackenzie Valley Pipeline. So I missed a lot and I found, that's why I found Mickelberg's book so good. Mm -hmm. The NDP had done so much that I wasn't aware of. I knew they did ICBC and uh, the land reform and yes. a few others. Yeah, the, the book is loaded with things that the NDP did and that I had forgot about <clears throat> or, or wasn't quite aware of. Anything else that um, you... A, a lot of guys I met were terrific, like Jack Webster. Yeah. Um, Jack Cullen? Uh, Cullen? Yeah, Jack Cullen a bit. Jack Wasserman wrote article. We were in the paper in those gossip kind yeah. of columns. Yes. Uh, uh, Jack Wasserman. Uh, there's another guy that's still alive back east. Um, Not Pat Burns. Oh, God, we got <laughs> Pat Burns, too, yeah. Oh, brother. Well, he came out here because he was having some difficulty back east. Oh, is that right? He had to remove himself oh, from the east. Oh. The, the guys, wild, were, wild. guys like this were looking for him back oh, there. Oh, wild. That's why he relocated out here. Oh, wild guy. Crazy, yeah. crazy program. Uh, um, Alan Fotheringham. Oh, Fotheringham, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He had an article. <clears throat> Sometimes he, I noticed in my scrapbook an article on the 17th and the 19th, and, and a little bit of a little blurb in it yes. about Haynes this, Federation this, Barrett this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but Jack Webster, I got to know real good and, and and very helpful to me when I was in the nurses' union organizing long-term care. Uh, interviewed me on and nurses on, on what was happening in long-term care. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Hmm. So, any other any other significant uh, union leaders that um, come to mind when you're thinking of your okay. history? <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Um, work with. If if we couldn't work with. If we couldn't work with the leader of the union, we circumvented him. For example, we had real trouble with the president of the union at one time was Jack Moore, a very capable guy, very articulate. Which you mean? IWA. Okay. Before Monroe. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and yet, but an alcoholic. Okay. And eventually killed him. Mm. But uh, we had a, very, a lot of difficulties with him. And uh, so one year, they, we, they were allowed to give, give us three names to be on the executive, mm -hmm. to put up for the ballot. And uh, we, we just went to the IWA and said, we will not accept Jack Moore this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said, you, we, we'll pick our people. I said, well, we won't put them on the slate. You know, mm -hmm. when I say, we'd already <clears throat> made that decision. Uh, thir 13 out of 16 had made mm -hmm. that decision. Mm -hmm. So they they bowed to us and they gave us Jock McKenzie, which who was a wonderful guy, and I I, hmm. I worked with him 
so close, and he was a wonderful leader as far as I was concerned. Should have been the head of the IWA. Yeah. Um, so there was Jock McKenzie from the IWA, a wonderful supporter. George Johnson, Len Guy, uh, who took over. Name. He took over after me from the Typographical Union. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I met him. And uh, <clears throat> close friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there were the you know, Len Guy was a very influential. It was, the, the, the guys in my time were George Johnson, uh, well, Pat O'Neill, yes. certainly. Although then he. Uh, left and went back to the pulp workers. Uh, so George Johnson, John Squire from Retail Wholesale, who took it over Retail Wholesale after me, uh, Len Guy, and um, Jock McKenzie. That was the federation. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was the, the group that. That was a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Do you see that the media role now being positive or negative? in the way they report labor? Uh, no. Well, there is no reporting. <laughs> you know, it, it's awful. It's unbelievable. Yes. Uh, I mean, mm. they, if you ever saw my scrapbooks, you wouldn't believe. Uh, I, if I burped, it was in the paper. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And you said the papers had labor reporters that yeah. were every, assigned every, to the labor meeting? Yeah, labor, yeah. yeah. full-time labor reporters. Mm -hmm. So they wrote on everything. I mean, the, uh, the Longshoremen Union met last night and decided that they were going to uh, boycott, uh, bo boycott some, some vessel coming yeah, in. Yeah. yeah, that would be there. And that, be and that would be a little bit of a story. Yes. Uh, maybe a bigger story. Mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. And. Uh -huh. uh, Everything and uh, articles about uh, the elections coming up at the BC Fed. Uh, Haynes looks like the leader. Uh, Someone's told he might run against him. This yeah. is happening and so on. Uh, wonderful coverage, and I can see why they stopped it because yeah, everybody knew about the labor movement. Now you don't hear anything. Right. Right. I, I think part. I I I am hesitant to say, but I think partly because. They're not as aggressive with the with the press now. Mm -hmm. we, 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 I had a wonderful. I, you know, I'm missing a great guy. I, I had a, one of our poker players as well, uh, Clive Lytle. Uh, Clive worked. Uh, he was an assistant to Tommy Douglas here okay. in British Columbia, okay. and he came from there to my uh, research guy, but really my communications officer eventually. Wow. And he was terrific. He, he could write a press release. They, they're a little bit lazy, so they just put the press release in exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you wrote it properly, they didn't have to do nothing. Yes. <laughs> so there it was, and they might enlarge it a bit, but then yeah. there's the press mm -hmm. release. Mm -hmm. So he did a wonderful job. Colin Gableman, who ended up Attorney General under yes. Barrett, he was my legislative director. Okay. So I had a wonderful staff. Yes. And I had staff both at both at the BC Federation of Labor <clears throat> and the nurses. I will never forget either of them that told me I was stupid and don't do this and don't mm -hmm. do that and and get me back on track. Sure. Uh, I I always believed as as you know well I guess that nobody's got the brains to do these jobs without great people yeah. inside them and who aren't yes people. Yes. And I think they get yes people and they're in deep trouble. Yes. But I remember the nurses, two, my two nurses that worked with me, mm -hmm. we had three people in the department, long-term care department. They'd say, oh, Ray, you're full of shit, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, Debbie Cameron, who's now top person at the mediation department, okay. uh, 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 provincial government, uh, that's where she went when she left the nurses. She used to say, Ray, you're, you're so full of bullshit, your eyes are brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deborah, Deborah, Deborah Service Brewster was my other uh, person that we worked together, real team. Mm -hmm. She's now negotiator for the uh, ITU in Victoria. So they both have done very well. ITU? No. Okay. In a so, transit union? No, I'm wrong. Um, same what union is uh, is uh, Len Guy. Um, oh yeah, the typographical. Typographical. typographical yeah. Union, yeah. The graphic. Yeah. Uh, 
they call it graphic arts or they yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. both of them <clears throat> and they thank me and they yes. and my eightieth birthday that they learned all this from me. But yeah. <laughs> anything at the federal level that ever uh, that you ever had a relationship with oh, the federal government? Uh, no, but there's articles there where we wouldn't allow Mackesy. We well, it wasn't that we didn't allow him. We just made sure that he wasn't invited, and he wanted to be invited to speak at our convention. This was the guy in charge of the postal worker, or something. A labor labor minister at one time mm -hmm. for, right. the, for the Liberals. Yes. And uh, Bryce Mackesy. Yeah, Bryce. Yeah, Mac yeah. yeah, yeah, Bryce yeah. Mackesy. And uh, <clears throat> so it didn't have too much to do with the politicians, but. Worked, uh, worked, uh, worked with Claude Jovan, which who was the, the the first uh, president of the Canadian Labour Congress when they merged. When they merged AFL CIO, then they merged the two groups, similar groups, in Canada as well. Mm -hmm. And the uh, French guy mm -hmm. from Quebec, Claude <coughs> Jovan, uh, took over, and we worked close together. We found. Uh, we could work closer with the Quebec delegates than, than the Re Ontario ones. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I always thank that we, heavens, that we have Quebec. Yes. Why did you find them easier to work with? They're far more progressive and social minded. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, where did the CFL flop into this with Sycamore? Um, I think, regrettably, we fought them too much. Yeah. Uh, it took us a while to smarten up a bit. Um, but I met some great guys. I met Sycamore, and uh, I was on a people's commission for a while. I was on loan from the nurses' union, and we went around. There was four or five of us, a, a, an Anglican minister, uh, a Walful guy, I forget his name right now. Uh, so there was four, four of us, uh, four or five of us, went around the province, uh, sponsored by, by the labor movement, uh, funded, I guess, and talked about what was needed to be done in the province of BC. It never got much publicity, and it, mm -hmm. it kind of fizzled. fizzled. I, I still have my brief that we had. Yes. Uh, but I met Jeff Keithley, who is now up on the Sunshine Coast, and he was from from uh, Kmaw, I think, and uh, Sycamore and those guys. And I, towards the end, I got along with them very good. <clears throat> And found I was could cl relate to those guys closer than I could do some others. And, and yes, yes, yeah. You find strange relationships yeah. amongst. All well, sorts for of example, Charlie Stewart ran against me a couple times. He was from the uh, Street Railwaymen's Union, but we respected each other. Uh, we ended up going to the races in Seattle all the way down. Drove down mm -hmm. there, him and I. We went to the Seattle races, uh -huh. uh, horse racing. We loved horse racing. We had that in common. Wow. But he ran against me, but we always respected one another. Um, and there was another chap that was, oh, uh, from the Civic Workers. Uh, I can't think of his name, but he, he I would meet him in the lobby of the Federal uh, Convention, mm -hmm. and he'd say, we're going to oppose you guys on this one. And sometimes he would give me some stuff that I would go back and talk and say, "Look, at, we haven't thought about this, yeah, we, you know." Exactly. And, and and I think one of the terrible parts about the labor movement, uh, one of the bad things that happened when the Communist Party got decapitated and finished, I think that changed the labor movement a bit, because I use a phrase: they kept us honest sometimes. Yes. Um, they they made us think, how how is everybody going to react to this? Are we on the right track? Let's make sure we got all the stuff, all the material, and all the facts, mm -hmm. and are on the right track. Mm -hmm. and, Do the analysis. Yeah, and uh, oh God, no, that we're going to have real trouble with those guys. Well, why are we going to have real trouble? Maybe they got a point. Let's think about it. You know, now, I'm, I I don't know. I'm not there, but I got a feeling that is not there anymore. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yes. No, I'm okay. No, we're pretty close to good. Any any questions that you may have? No, I think we've covered the gamut. 